Daniel, I don't cover the ad business as an industry analyst, so I'm just going to jump kind of, well, let me talk about the top line. They had a rough Q322. They missed on the top by 2% and a huge miss on EPS by 15%. Uh, but guess what? Bright spot, ding, ding, ding. Actually, two bright spots. The cloud, Google Cloud, up 38%. Boom. Hedging up, <laughs> currency hedging up $576 million. I love that they put in there. It just shows uh, what you can do with good cash management. And I wish Microsoft uh, would do that. And they added a paltry 37,000 uh, employees uh, uh, year on year. But Google Cloud, that's the focus. Uh, revenues up to 6.9 billion. They narrowed the loss percentage from 13% to 10. They still lost $700 million, but on 38% more revenue. And as you might remember from our visit to uh, Next in New York City at beautiful, beautiful Pier 57, uh, I uh, asked Google Cloud CEO Thomas Curian, "Hey, why don't you why don't you why don't you give more love on the earnings call?" And um, uh, Regina, who runs AR, was like, "Patrick, did you not pay attention basically to the last earnings?" I said, "I did, but I couldn't make the call." She said, "Watch this next earnings." And to their credit, uh, there were twenty eight earnings call citations about Google Cloud, two pages of, of content out there talking about uh, Google Cloud Next updates, Google Workspace wins, and overall big customer wins. But what I liked the best out of all of those 28 call citations was Google CEO Sundar Pichai saying that Google Cloud is a key priority for the company. And listen, I've run corporate comms and marketing for big corporations. I know what happy talk is on corporations, but I think it's meaningful that he said this because there's always that bugaboo that, that a lot of these Google Cloud competitors are whispering into our ears, which is, hey, how committed are these folks, right? If the going gets tough in advertising, which it did, what does that mean to the investment uh, in Google Cloud? So anyways, 38%, $6.9 billion. Man, we are getting close to a $30 billion annual revenue run rate. And I think that is incredible. Yeah, Pat, I, I first of all, totally understand where you're coming from in terms of the company talking more about it. I think it's been one of those things that's had a little bit of a uh, it's been a little ominous about talking because people get a little tough on them about the, the, the profitability of it, but Google has the luxury. And I want to be very clear that this is okay. When you have a business that creates extraordinary profit margins, it's okay to take the margins and utilize it to invest in growth areas. Google, yeah. Google understands that this isn't a game that they want to play at a small scale. I Meaning if they wanted to be a small scale cloud company, they could probably make it profitable. They could start right now, start cutting fat and taking a $7 billion ish run rate and making it profitable this quarter, just get rid of a lot of overhead and costs. But they want, you know, look at you, you've got Amazon. We'll talk about that in a minute doing almost $21 billion a quarter. And that's their target. Let's just be very clear at who their target is. Their target is to be the biggest. Google doesn't enter markets to be a third, fourth, fifth player. And so they're, they they want to be 20 plus billion dollars a quarter. And we are in the early days. You can go back and review our commentary on Google Cloud Next. This is a company that's finding its way into key uh, enterprises in every major industry. And whether that's coming in as the second cloud, the primary cloud, and of course, with great depths of experience running their own cloud, the, the, talk about run, learning how to build a cloud to run traffic. I mean, the highest search volume traffic in the world them securing it, making making it compliant around. So they've got a lot of best practices inside their four walls, Pat, that are going to be very valuable as they continue to scale the business. On the whole, you know, look, I will talk a little bit about ad tech just because I think it's an interesting, uh, I like to talk about the economy. And as you see, there are certain uh, booms and busts in tech that are very reflective of what's going on in the macro space. 
First is semiconductor booms and busts. We all know we're in a little bit of the bust cycle of semis now. Well, guess what? That tends to run very much in parallel with GDP. So as we look at what's going to happen to our economy, um, it tends to be a good leading indicator. So if the Fed's watching, you know, I, I could join the Fed board, guys. Which one do you want me to run? Chicago, San Francisco? You know, I can do this. Um, but in, in serious, that's something to watch. Ad tech's another one. Ad tech is an amalgamation of many smaller businesses. So this is the way small businesses reach customers. So whether you're in, using Google uh, keywords, you're using YouTube, you're using TikTok, you're using Snap, this is a what I call a hierarchical revenue model where the best tend to get the the, the least spill during the, the downturns and the lesser get, they fall harder. We saw what happened to Snap. Meta right now has no clear strategy. Their metaverse is completely nebulous and people are, are moving away and they find Mark Zuckerberg to be arrogant. Now their investors are turning on them as well. By the way, did you see Jim Cramer? I think he cried on TV. Um, he did. Yeah, and, which is weird. But. It's sad though, but he, he probably lost a lot of people a lot of money because people listened to him. And, you know, um, but my point is, is Meta and their strategy. So I still think Alphabet and Google's at the very top of the pyramid in terms of when people are going to cut, they'll cut Google's ads and YouTube less than other things. But um, I mean, TikTok's a major problem and it continues to be a, a growth story. So, uh, Pat, you know, overall, I think Alphabet's in a situation now where they got to double down on cloud. They got to get that to growth and profit, uh, get that growth to profit in some time. But having said that, focusing on their core business. And, and by the way, I do love the fact that this company generated $70 billion, you know, almost 70 and missed by a little bit, but they still generated almost $70 billion in revenue. So man, it, it, sometimes these numbers are just astounding to me. 